All right, I'm Nobs, and this is Blooper. Okay, so we have some stuff on the table now. Help you feel comfortable. We have a nice sock there. What are we doing here? This series is a window into what it takes to make a pedal. Um, the maneuvers and struggles and mistakes that are necessary to bring a thing to life. Uh, each episode will start with a jam, just like we've done here, so you can kind of catch up with Blooper and get a feel for where it's at right now. We'll show you what's changed, footage of tests and impressions and decisions, the work that goes into it. We'll be visiting some familiar friends to see how they bloop, and we have a bunch of trips planned and we'll just take you with us. We're at the beginning of a process and there will be things. There will be surprises and compromises and disappointments and you're going to see us try to figure it all out and try and do right by this little thing. Just make the best little blooper that we can make. So let's, let's see what happens. Hey man. How's it going? How do you feel about me taking one of the bloopers completely apart? Do it. Great. Okay, so the first thing to do is a little walkthrough of what blooper is meant to do. Now, keep in mind, any of this could change, and some of it definitely will. This unit is the unit we brought with us to NAM and has already been redesigned. So this was our first crack at actually putting the ideas into practice. And some of them were bad. And that's my fault. Um, and we'll get into that later on. But some of the labels are incorrect. And that's how it is. So the core idea with Blooper is that the actual recording of loops is not the whole point, but the first step. So what Blooper does is it gives you a whole bunch of different tools that allow you to transform that audio once it's in there in a way that is meant to be quite personal and controllable. Okay, so let's record a loop from scratch to see how it works. Okay, adequate loop recorded. The first thing to note is that drift has been cancelled. It is no longer a feature because it's not that interesting, so don't pay it any mind at all. The bottom three knobs here all control things that process the sound of your loop. Stability's job is to give your loops more of an analog feel. So at lower settings, you'll get warmer, tapier, warblier sounds. And if we can really stick the landing, higher settings will get destructive and noisy and should make it feel like blooper is physically shaking, so. The modifiers are selectable loop effects, some of which will be familiar, some of which will be simply practical, and some will be more exciting new things. You'll get reverse, you'll get half speed, you'll get filters, you'll get things that trim your loop, and then you'll get things that turn your loop into patterns. These will be user selectable via USB, and we will continue to make them after release. Where all of this gets fun is that these sound processing things can be recorded into the loop as if they were audio. So for example, you can do a half speed effect, 
Record that. Now your loop will be half speed. You can change to another modifier and do more things to it. So you can purposefully transform your loop over time, or you can do more additive type things where perhaps you set the stability quite low, you just leave it recording, and over time, it'll get more and more degraded. One fun example of this is a modifier called dropper, which we have a crude version of in here that will exclude pieces of your audio over time. So if you just leave this recording, little by little, your loop will crumble, fall apart, and disappear. So let's test this out. Now even when stability is turned down, its character is there in the loop. Let's record a filter sweep. Good. Very crude, but you should get the idea. Now, an aspect of Blooper that I'm excited about are multiple layers of undo and redo. So you can feel free to explore, record changes, record small changes, and not worry about them destroying your loop. Um, we haven't settled on a number yet, but it looks like it will be upwards of eight. Let's test it. Now our filtered layer is out. Now our filtered layer is back in. So this is probably a good time to discuss cross. What cross allows you to do is store a loop in a particular state and keep it that way, even as you continue to overdub and change everything else around it. So let's lock in a loop right now. Okay, we've locked in a loop. At this extreme, we have our current active loop At this extreme, we have the cross loop. Now, if we record a whole bunch more stuff to the main loop, we'll be able to hear the difference. Okay, so we've really ruined our main loop. Now we can crossfade back to simpler times. There it is. So simple and innocent. Now, of course, we could dial in a blend of the two. What the drift knob was meant to do was create a time delay between the locked loop and the main loop so that you could create coursing effects and delays and patterns as they bounce off each other. This was not that interesting in practice, but we will probably add a modifier that can do this. Blooper also saves audio. So instead of the left-right preset system of other Chase Bliss pedals with Blooper, it takes you into a save bank where you can save the audio from your loops scroll through them, recall them. None of that is implemented yet, so we'll get back to that in a later version. One thing to note about Blooper is that ramping can now be synced. Specifically, it can be synced to the length of the loop. So what that means is if you ramp changes, they will occur at the same point in time in your loop consistently, so it will be more like pattern building than modulation happening separate or apart from your loop. 
Another thing worth noting is that we are somewhat redesigning the dip switch system uh, compared to other Chase Bliss pedals because loopers are super personal and people have a lot of preferences. So if possible, we'd like to use the dip switches for customization. For example, after recording layer one, does pressing the record button go into play or stay in record state? That's something that people can choose via dip switch, we hope. Oh, and we haven't worked out the details, but external syncing is important to us and it will do that. Now there is one big thing we have yet to discuss with Blooper, and that is the states. The reason being that this was the thing I screwed up most in version one of the design. So in order to talk about that, let's move on to the next segment, what Blooper is right now. I've been picking at this little hair since Nan. It's time for it to go. It's time to, to really do this. Wow. I've been trying to get this little hair off blooper for like two months. That was almost too, too easy. I actually made a note to myself to do that on camera because I thought it would be interesting content. Okay, so, states. States are very important and the thing that I screwed up most in the first design of Blooper. So what states do is they repurpose the foot switches. And I thought I was being very clever by having a state for the modifiers so that your foot switches could turn effects on and off, which would be nice and very performance friendly, but it stinks. So you go into that modify state, now your record switch activates the left modifier. The problem with that is you turn it on, you enjoy things for a time, and you forget. And then you go to overdub a layer and you turn your modifier off. It's not a good system, it gets confusing, and although it's handy to have foot switch control over the modifiers, we have done away with that. But there is still a way to do foot switch effects. So we'll get to that. What we've done is these first two states, record and modify, are combined. The record state, now the foot switches are primed for typical looping behavior. Stop, play, record, undo, redo. This is the destructive button, this is the constructive button. That's the basic idea. Now what we've done with modifiers is the modifiers no longer are activated by foot switch, they are just on and they have off positions or dead positions so you know put the modifier there won't do anything put it there it will do things now we need to determine whether middle position or left position makes the most sense for some modifiers left is better for some middle is better regardless that's how the modifier system is going to work the initial thought process with the state system is that you would go through this loop creating process almost like a conveyor belt. First you'd record, then you'd modify, then you'd alt, which we'll get to. But the reality is that it's not a very linear process and we don't want it to be. So the first big change is that record is by far the primary state. All of the sound processing stuff, all of the main aspects of blooper live in that record state now, which has absorbed modify. But we still do have two other states, and these are designed to be complementary areas. Um, and one of them in particular could be very exciting. So what the alt loop does is it gives you another secondary looper inside of blooper. Now this looper is listening to your main loop and it uses this to create its first layer. But you set your own loop boundaries. Press record, that's your endpoint. Press record, that's your out point. So you can reloop a smaller piece of this main loop, at which point 
goes to its own track, and now you have this separate area that you can overdub, change, make its own, and then you can switch back and forth between the alt loop and the main loop. That leaves us with one available state, and though it's unlisted here, what that will be is performance. What the performance state does is it repurposes these foot switches into performance-oriented things. Resetting your loop, momentary reverse, stutter, tape stops, this kind of thing. One of those effects might look like this. Resetting the loop to a point in time that you choose. There's a lot of opportunity for fun with that performance state. And let's hope it is. Now, let's talk about all the things that are wrong with this blooper. The first that we've already mentioned, the states will be changing, the drift knob is out, the drift knob will be linked to the perform mode, it will be the perform knob, and it will also have, hopefully, a very interesting function in the alt and record states. We'll talk about that later. Stability and all of the modifiers are examples more than finished things. They don't sound or behave the way they will in the end. Right now, our dry signal is affected by all the modifiers and stability, which will not be the case. The stability knob makes a lot of crackly noise when you turn it. The volume knob affects your dry signal. We've done very little with the dip switches. Synced ramping does not work. The LEDs do not work the way that they should. And our audio quality is kind of funky we think it's phasing. In short, nothing sounds or behaves the way it's supposed to. Nothing. Okay, I will never do that much talking in a single video again. chicken livers and hearts, like bloody hearts. Can you play three-way squash or no? <laughs> Part won't get modified by this? No. That's cool. It's just totally safe. Oh, that's cool. So then you can yeah. fuck it up like this. And then go back at the same time. Like this. Did I just turn everything off? Oh, did I? Could have been okay, me. there. I can start over and make like a better. We totally broke loop. it. <laughs> Cool.